Perceive, process, perform. Do you need inspiration for your practice? Or do you simply need to practice inspiration? With this series, we aim to do both. Give us 15 minutes and we'll give you practice inspiration. This presentation is given by Dr. Dennis Abbott. The theme, why a dentist must be part of the cancer care team. It's something many of us rarely consider, but the oral side effects of modern oncology therapies can often cause intraoral sores, pain, and infections that can significantly reduce the quality of life. You may not realize it, but as dentists, we're in a unique position to help our patients manage and overcome these challenges before, during, and after cancer therapy. We are pleased to feature Dr. Abbott, the founder and CEO of Dental Oncology Professionals, an oral medicine practice dedicated to the care for the unique dental and oral health needs of individuals battling cancer in this episode of Practice Inspiration. When we mention cancer, it's a disease that all of us have faced, either maybe personally, maybe somebody that we know, somebody that we love, a patient, a family member. It's touched all of us. And this is a disease that has to be recognized whenever we are in our field of dentistry. And when we're thinking about the care that we give to the people that are in our service. Three words that are terrifying to almost all people. You have cancer. Why is that? Why is it still so scary to hear those words that we, that, that we're, that it's just, it, it's terrifying and, 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 and we just never want to hear that for ourselves or anybody that we love. Well, when we look at it, it's, it looks like this. I mean, over the course of the past few years, we've made a lot of strides in cardiovascular disease, in um, stroke, in pneumonia, all of those kinds of issues, we, uh, those aren't scary anymore, but for, or, or they are scary, but not to the extent of cancer. So when we think about cancer, it's just been within the last maybe 10 years or so that we've begun to make strides in finding ways to treat it, how to uh, manage it better. But what about how it affects in the world of dentistry? Are we making any strides there? Are we thinking about that? And that's what I'm challenging you today to think about is how do we approach cancer, the topic of, of cancer in dentistry, and why is it important? There's a shift that's going on right now in the United States. There's a trend that's happening. For years and years and years, we've thought of the standard of care as being the promotion of, of really how we take care of people. But standard of care in medicine says this, if you fit in the norm, if you are the average guy, then this is the best treatment for you. But there's a shift that's happening right now that's moving out of that treating the average to treating the individual. And that's where we, as dentists, come into play in the world of cancer. Because right now, the shift is moving toward this, an individualized type of care. Something that happens just for that person that is specifically unique just for them. It's, and, and, and people are demanding a coordinated care because they're going to have different team members. They're going to have this doctor here, this doctor here, this doctor over here, and they need for them to communicate and all be on the same page. That is what we call in the world of oncology comprehensive care. It is taking care of the dentistry, it's taking care of the nutrition. It's taking care of the reconstruction. It's taking care of all the needs of the individual to give this individualized, coordinated, comprehensive care that people are demanding and people are expecting, and rightly they should. So how do we play into that? It's been like this forever, that the body is over here, 
and the mouth is over here. We have medical insurance and we have dental insurance. We have dentists and we have physicians. And ne'er shall the two meet, but why? Why can't we understand that the mouth is part of the body? And what goes on in the mouth affects our entire being. And that's where things get really exciting whenever you think about what you can give to the patients who need your service the most. Whenever we think about oncology care, there are several ways that we treat things, okay? A lot of times patients are gonna go through surgery. One of the tasks that I have in the hospital where I'm on staff whenever I'm not in my private practice is taking care of patients that are going through transplant. Before they go through their transplant surgery, they have to come see me. They have to get things checked off. They have to get the, 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 the box marked there that says they're clean, they're ready to go. We're not going to run the risk of infection. Why is that? Because we're going to immunosuppress the patient. We're going to take their immune system down to the basement. And while, while that's happening, we don't want all the extra bacteria, all the extra load of, 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 of microbes in their mouth. So we clean them up. We make sure that they have everything in check before they're checked off to go through the transplant surgery. So that's the same concept that we can think about whenever we're thinking about oncology. So even for the patient that's going through just surgery, say they got it very early, stage one, carcinoma in situ, just going through surgery, we have a role. And that's what I want you to see today, but this is, this is a role that we have for every single person that's going through cancer treatment. It's not just oral cancer. I mean, that's what we think about all the time. As dentists, we're thinking oral cancer, you know? It's, it's just that's, that's where we are. That's our part of the body. But we have to think about this for the entire person and everybody who's going through treatment. So any type of surgery, we're going to benefit the patient by just decreasing the bacterial load in their mouth. Now, when we get into more specific types of treatment in oncology, it gets very, very interesting. Chemotherapy, all right? What happens in chemotherapy? Well, the immune system takes a roller coaster ride. It goes up and down. They, you know, they, they, they get an infusion, they're okay, maybe a day later, they're feeling horrible, and then they really, really get down, and then they start to come back up. And then they take another infusion, and then they go back down the hill again. The reason they're at the bottom, that nadir, that very zenith point of the low, is because they're so immunosuppressed. White counts drop. White counts, and then platelets, because platelets are going to follow the whites. So we're in a situation here where we have an opportunity in, this, in these patients who are going to be purposefully immunosuppressed by the cytotoxic drugs that they're going through for their treatment to be effective in, in, in what we can do to help manage them. There are things like mucositis, mouth sores that happen in patients that are going through chemo sometimes, depending on what kind of regimen they're on, depending on how often they're getting their treatments. There are certain types of drugs that we have to be aware of that are in, included in the chemotherapy regimens, bisphosphonates, that are given IV that put the patient at risk for developing osteonecrosis. Dead bone inside the mouth, exposed, you know, full of bacteria that, that, that are in the mouth. So, so we have reasons to do what we do because when we look at a mouth, and we look at a mouth that looks like this, you and I see this for what it is. But our medical colleagues, unfortunately, they think, yeah, they have a little bit of stain on that front tooth. This is, this is a patient who has been through chemotherapy. They didn't get the services that we can provide to them before they started the treatment. This is a patient who's been through head and neck radiation therapy. And the, and, and the physician just thought, well, you know, they just had some funny looking teeth, maybe a little bit of something on there. I didn't, I didn't know what it was. But you and I see this for what it is, and it is this. It's a mouthful of bacteria that we have an opportunity to take care of. 
And it's not just hygiene. I mean, hygiene is a huge part. It's not just hygiene, but it is, it is, it is restorative. It is all of the things that we can offer. So patients that are going through radiation therapy, patients that are going through head and neck radiation therapy specifically have unique needs that we can meet. Their needs last a lifetime. Their needs are for the rest of their life. So these are the opportunities that we have. Hemopoietic stem cell patients, the same thing, the same type of immunosuppression as we're going through that. And these people are on immunosuppressants usually for the rest of their lives, chronic graft versus host. All of these are issues that we need to know about and we need to become the healthcare professionals of the mouth, the medical doctors of the mouth, oral health professionals from a restorative and from preventive. And I, I don't want you to get me wrong. I don't want you to think that this is just about prevention. This is just about cleaning teeth. In radiation therapy, we have an opportunity to reconstruct I have a patient right now that I'm, that's in my practice. She was occluding on her very, very back teeth. She had part of her mandible removed, all of her teeth missing from number 20 on back. And this was, the way that she was biting was hitting back way in number two and number 31 and number 21 with number 12. And that was it. She could not eat. Everything that she had was pureed because she couldn't function. Reconstructing that bite, that occlusion, is essential. We have a role. Dental oncology is about dentistry. It's about oral medicine. It's about knowing how to take care of the patient with cancer and putting them all together. There are a lot of people that need our services. Right now, around 14 and a half million people are living with cancer. By the year 2024, that number is expected to rise to over 19 million. It's not just these large cancer centers anymore where people are going. They're getting treatment closer to home where they can be with their family and be with their loved ones. And so when they're not going to a place that has a comprehensive program, where are they getting their dental needs met? Their dental needs met. It's here, it's us. We have a role. This is the role that I challenge you to accept, whether it's a way that you move your practice or just being able to take care of the patients who are already in your practice that you can meet the needs of. It's dental oncology.